Coming to the second topic, which is the mesenteric cyst. Mesenteric cyst is basically a, uh, the it is a cystic uh, swelling which is seen at the uh, root where the mesentery is arise. So mesentery is mesentery is arise forming the gastroduodenal that is the duodenal jejunal junction to the ileocecal junction. So there are two types. So it can be chylolymphatic type which is most common which contains thin wall lined by endothelium and it has a clear fluid that is chyle. Another it can be enterogenous type. Enterogenous type has a thick wall stratified epithelium. Thick wall stratified epithelium and it contains the mucinous with blood vessels. It is mainly seen in the age group of 20 to 30 years having a patient complaints of clinical complaints of an abdominal lump. Abdominal lump which is painless which is painless and uh, and there is a mobility on examination we see it is mobile and what is the investigation of choice we have to do cct that is contrast enhanced ct scan now there is a triad what is the triad known as the tylox triad tylox triad tells that there is a mid abdominal cystic swelling first mid abdominal cystic swelling okay then there is a mobile mobility mobility of the swelling at the first and the root of the mesentery and there is a band of resonance band of resonance in the front of the cyst in the front of the cyst there is a band of resonance so this is a triad known as tylox triad now what is the management management is if there is a chylolymphatic type we have to enucleate that mesenteric cyst and if it is enterogenous type we have to cystic excision of this mesenteric cyst along with there is a resection we have to do resection okay this is all about the mesenteric cyst now coming to the meconium ileus meconium ileus is basically seen in the cystic fibrosis patient having the autosomal recessive disorder and is, is as a mutation of cftr gene so main clinical features is the antenatal obstruction there is an antenatal obstruction with a perforation leading to chemical peritonitis if the meconium in the baby is ruptured okay from the if there is a perforation obstruction is there obstruction prolonged obstruction leads to perforation and it will spread to along the peritoneum cavity so it will causes the chemical peritonitis so what is the x-ray appearance it is a snowstorm appearance in the x-ray along with there can be with antenatal obstruction there can be pseudocyst there can be bowel atresia or microcolon so what is the treatment treatment is the either surgery surgery is known as bishop scoops operation and treatment is basically gastrographin enema to be done that is the meconium plug syndrome if there is a meconium plug syndrome so meconium is obstruction in the lumen meconium is obstructed in the baby it is a pediatric disorder so gastrographin enema to be done it is a type of barium enema which is to be done and after that a surgery which is known as bishop scoop operation to be done now what is malrotation malrotation is a non-rotation or can be in complete rotation so if the <coughs> rotation of the intestine is non it doesn't rotate then lads man obstruct the second part of the duodenum with the cecum so with the duodenum and cecum there is a lads band leading to non rotation of the of the uh, of the intestine this leads to bilious vomiting so bile with vomiting comes out if there is a incomplete rotation so incomplete rotation due to mesentery so <clears throat> in the mesentery if the mid gut volvulus is present and present with the within one year of age it is present in one year of age due to mesentery in the mesentery so it is incomplete obstruction we have to do barium meal follow through and we see we'll see a coarse q appearance you have to do ct scan we'll see real appearance real appearance so what is the treatment treatment of both of these is the lads operation so lads operation in malrotation and for meconium ileus you have to do bishop's loop operation, the subscoop operation.
Now coming to what is superior mesenteric artery syndrome. Superior mesenteric artery syndrome is a clinical feature where the first part of the duodenum is squeezed by the abdominal aorta and the superior mesenteric artery. So first part of the duodenum is between the abdominal aorta and superior mesenteric artery we know that so if it is squeezed suppose there is a abdominal fat so mesenteric fat is less or there is a which provides a cushion and prevents this squeezing so excessive weight loss done or surgery for scoliosis or congenitally there is a absence of the or reduction of the uh, ligament of trees so there is a uh, decrease in the aortomesenteric angle and leading to the squeezing of the mes uh, duodenum, the first part of the duodenum, which is known as the superior mesenteric artery syndrome. What will be the clinical features of the patient? Intestinal obstruction, weight loss, abdominal pain, and safety bilious, the sorry, satiety bilious vomiting. So, bilious vomiting will be will present. Now, what is the treatment? Ma treatment or management is the lysis of the addition with laparotomy. So, open laparotomy with lysis of the addition. Now, coming to internal hernia. What is internal hernia? It is the failure of root of the mesentery to fuse with the posterior abdominal wall. So, if the mesentery, if the mesentery root is does not fuse with the posterior abdominal wall then it will create a pocket and inside that pocket there will there will lie the sac of the peri uh, sac of the bowel okay that is intraparietal hernia so there will be intraparietal parietal hernia intraparietal hernia so these are of two type most common is the left paraduodenal hernia. It is behind the inferior mesenteric vein and the fourth part of the duodenum. So behind inferior mesenteric vein and the fourth part of the duodenum, due to lifting lifting of the peritoneal fold, the the intestinal content will come out, and this is known as the fossa of Langerhans. So the, in this fossa of Lang Langerhans, there is lie the 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 mesentery and the bowel behind the inferior mesenteric vein and the fourth part of the duodenum and it is most common and the right paraduodenal hernia is the behind the superior mesenteric artery and the third part of the duodenum in the valdeus fossa another thing is that there can be a patterson hernia which is a complication of rooks and rooks n x uh, rooks and rooks n y surgery or any gastric surgery so there is a patterson hernia